Hey photographers, you like to ask about travel cameras. So for our Florida road trip, I picked the Canon SL2. Won't you join me while I put it through its paces? Note that in some areas it's sold as the Canon 200D. Now B&H sent it over with the Canon shotgun mic and a Gorillapod so we can do some vlogging too. Paul Marshman, the traveling boomer and I, are the guests of Visit Florida, who've arranged our destinations and accommodations. As we traveled from St. Augustine's historic sites to the horse farms and spring-fed parks in Ocala, and then on to the Gasparilla Parade in Tampa, I found it simple to operate in any of its modes, and was quite happy with the photos. Good colors, nice dynamic range, and clear details. Florida offers lots of photo opportunities, whether we were kayaking in Silver Springs Park, eating at restaurants in the Colonial Quarters in St. Augustine, or watching wildlife at the Florida Aquarium in Tampa. It's also a capable video camera to shoot pirates entering Tampa Bay, monkeys at Silver Springs, and the late night cruise in Ybor City. The SL2 is small and light, and although the kit lens keeps the weight down and matches the white case nicely, I ditched the kit lens before I left, changing it for the L-Series 24-105. What you lose in weight, you make up for in quality. I'll show you in a minute. It's available in black and white, and in kits with and without this and other lenses. Links below. It looks quite pretty in white, with a few gray accents. It's distinctive and got quite a few nice camera remarks. The grip is slightly small for my hand, but with the textured thumb rest on the back, I found it comfortable enough to hold. The on-off and mode switch on top are conveniently positioned. There's only one control dial on top, easily accessed behind the shutter button. You have to hold the AVEV button to make exposure compensation adjustments, or to set the aperture in manual. I found it easy enough to master. A variety of buttons to access specific functions, menu on the left, which I don't mind on a DSLR, quick menu in center of the control dial. The optical viewfinder adjusts enough to suit my prescription using the diopter dial. This is the tilting, swiveling screen I wish all cameras had. It closes to protect and can be swiveled all the way down, up, and around to face front. The camera with battery, weighs 453 grams. The kit lens about 200, a total of just over 650 grams. On the right side, HDMI, the larger mini size, and USB. On the left, mic in and remote control. There is a pop-up flash, no guide number was provided. Battery and car door on the bottom, with enough space to accommodate a quick release plate. There's a Wi-Fi button on top, to enable that feature. Before you leave, install the Canon Camera Connect app on your phone and establish the Wi-Fi connection so you can transfer images to the phone to post on social media. The kit lens is fine, but comparing the kit to the Canon 24105L, the clarity and definition discrepancy is clear. I understand cost and weight can be issues, but this camera can do better than this lens. Now this is a DSLR, a camera with a mirror, so by default you shoot with the viewfinder. There's a button on the back to shoot with the screen, and I found the SL2 to be a little more responsive in screen mode, usually called live view, than most DSLRs. The exposure system is fairly standard Canon. Let's flip back to viewfinder mode. Use the mode dial to select the exposure mode, program, shutter, or time value in the Canon language, aperture, and manual. Use the Q-Set button to interact with the screen and select the meter mode with four options. Matrix, evaluative in the Canon language, partial, spot, and center weighted. I'd probably exchange the icons for evaluative and center weighted. Exposure settings are adjusted using the top dial. In program mode, soft press the shutter and the viewfinder displays the shutter speed and aperture that will be used for the image. In program mode, the top dial gives alternate combinations of shutter speed and aperture that yield the same result. In time value, the dial adjusts the shutter speed 30 seconds to 1 over 4000. Use this mode for things that are fast or to do a longer time exposure for light trails or smooth water effects. You'll need a tripod. 
In aperture priority, the f-stop, which is lens dependent, and it's f4 to f22 on this lens. The kit lens is f3.5, ramping to f5.6 as you zoom to 55 millimeters, closing to f22, which ramps to f32 as you zoom in. I primarily use aperture priority to draw attention to the subject while blurring the background and sometimes the foreground. In those three modes, pressing the AV button and turning the dial changes the exposure compensation, five stops up or down to make an image lighter or darker. In manual, the dial controls the shutter, press the AV button to change the aperture. I've had the camera in auto ISO, and in manual there's no exposure compensation. In order to make it brighter or darker, you need to set the ISO manually as well. Using the meter, Auto ISO sets the ISO up to a value that you select on the menu. I'm using a maximum of 6400. Higher ISOs make for grainier images, but the SL2 seems to do a pretty good job. For travel, I'd rather have the photo, even if it does end up being a little grainy. With manual ISO, which can be selected from the menu or using the ISO button on top, the ISO can be set from 100 to 25,600. And here's what those higher values look like. When using manual mode with a manual ISO setting, the display shows your exposure. A correct exposure would be at zero but you've taken manual control in order to set the exposure you want, maybe you want it darker. The controls work the same way in Live View, and now you can also press the Info button to see the histogram. A properly exposed image will have a centered display, but this is a technical reference. It's up to you to create the image you want. In the menu, Use Image Review to set how long the image is displayed on screen after you take it to check that it's OK. You can set this to a longer length if you like. The camera returns to shooting mode as soon as you soft press the shutter. There are three autofocus modes in Viewfinder mode, Single or One Shot, Continuous or Servo, and AI Focus, which switches from Single to Continuous if the subject moves. The focus point is auto-selected, or manual, where you can select one of the nine focus points. I wanted to get close-ups of pirates and other Gasparilla participants, which can be a challenge while the parade moves quickly by our Visit Tampa viewing stand location. About 70% were spot on. The remainder were slightly soft. Only a few were completely missed. In live view, only one shot or continuous, but now there's face detect, with tracking, as well as area and single point. Move the point using the control dial. The SL2 also has touch, turn it on and off in the bottom left. Now, and I've been using auto white balance, but if you need consistent colors, or the colors aren't turning out quite right in your lighting conditions, you can select a preset white balance or create one from a photo. There are two versions of auto white balance, and I'm not sure why these are partially hidden. They could just be adjacent on the white balance selection strip. Anyway, press Info and select either to keep the warmer amber tones in low light interiors or go with a pure white. It's nice to have the option. Sometimes it's nice to have pure white, and sometimes the warmer tones look better. In live view, Pressing QSET brings up an interactive menu of options, including white balance, scroll through the same selections across the bottom, or touch to navigate and select. Then shift one down to picture style. Canon's color profiles, again, a series of presets designed for specific results or scenes. Press info to adjust individual parameters within each, and here Canon provides more options than most, with three sharpness adjustments. Of course, these adjustments are not applied to RAW files. Move down to Creative Filters for a selection of effects. Again, press Info to adjust the settings for each. Now, these are not compatible with RAW, which means a trip to the menu to disable it. Some useful, mostly gimmicky. I just don't get water painting. These images always look washed out to me. And th these effects are also available by turning the mode dial to the Creative Filter setting. 
And here are several HDR-inspired settings. Standard, Vivid, Bold, and Embossed are available. And in this mode, also not compatible with RAW, there's no warning or requirement to turn it off first. But RAW files are not saved, even if that's selected on the menu. Could we have some consistency, please? Drive modes are also on the Q-Set menu. Single, continuous, which fires about 5 frames per second, 300 images in 60 seconds, and that's reasonably fast, but it never seems to run out of buffer when shooting JPEGs to a fast SD card. That was enough to get some great shots at an equestrian competition in Ocala. There are two euphemistically styled silent modes, which are not silent at all. 10 and 2 second timers, and a 10 second with from 2 to 10 shots. Turn the power switch to Movie to record video. This changes the menu to video specific settings, although most are also available on the QSET menu. At full 1080 HD, 60 and 30 frame modes, and a lower quality light mode at 30 frames, then 24 at 1080 and some lower resolution settings. There are settings for audio to set levels and enable the wind filter and limiter, here called attenuator. When 1080 24 frame is selected, digital zoom can be activated, which enables the up-down buttons on the controller to zoom, although 10 times is a clear reduction in quality. I thought the SL2 would be a terrific camera for vlogging. After all, it has a screen that swivels out, it has a mic input, and I'm using the Canon DME1. It's one of many options that would work. I tried vlogging, both with the 24mm Canon Prime, as well as this Rokinon 16mm lens. And I'm using the Joby Gorillapod, after all, well, you know. I'm happy with the focus, and I'm happy with the exposure, but the shot does look a little bit shaky. Maybe that's me. Use the HDMI jack for 1080-60 output, regardless of the camera setting, although the aspect ratio changes to standard def at 480. There are no settings to control the HDMI output. Use info to cycle through the display options, but there's no fully clean output option. There's no zebra, no peaking, and although there is an audio in jack, there's no headphone jack or on-screen audio meter. There is a time-lapse mode. But there's no panorama mode, which would be useful in a travel camera. Canon's menu lacks the capability and complexity of some, but I found it easy to find and adjust settings. The guides and tips provided are good. The menu is context sensitive, so it's necessary to switch to video mode before the video settings are even displayed. Navigation is sometimes awkward. Here, for example, you can't select the picture style below by pressing down. You have to go left or right. Battery life, as with most DSLRs, is above average, and for the SL2, even when recording video. The SL2 is an entry-level camera, but it can take great pictures, just maybe not with the kit lens. Its auto modes deliver, but when situations or your creativity demand more, has all the manual controls you need as well. It's good for travel, and as long as you don't have 4K Envy and have a steady hand, pretty good for video as well. Likes, comments, questions below. I do reply to all relevant questions and civil comments. And if you have one more click, please subscribe.